These are all Kira supports. Which is cool because Kira has had this reputation for having these hard to remove supports. And the settings I'm sharing with you are some of the best I've ever used for printing my minis and my models, which is what I print on this channel. Let's do it. Hi there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printing Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about several different support settings that have worked really well for me in the past um, month or so. This video is a little bit longer and a little more information rich than a lot of my normal videos, but I think it's kind of important for this. A lot of people are asking more questions about support, so I felt the need to do that and kind of share what's been working really well for me lately, as well as some of the settings that have been working well for others in the community. So without further ado, I use the following two kind of groups of support settings in my profiles. Yeah, this would be a crappy video if it ended here. We're gonna do better. <laughs> I wanna make sure with this video that you understand the settings as much as possible in regards to minis and models because I want you to feel empowered and unafraid of printing with supports. Because if you're afraid of printing things with supports, then you're gonna limit yourself big time to a very small fraction of the models that exist in the whole 3D mini and terrain community by only printing things that are supportless. Case in point, I've been using these settings for the past few weeks to test print lots of the dragons I've been printing that you guys might have been seeing on social media, as well as a bunch of minis I've been printing. And Support Wolf has gotten a lot easier and assembly has been a lot more enjoyable as well. Let's start with Support Overhang. Now this is a setting that tells Kira to look for angles steeper than 70 degrees and then tells it to, to generate supports for it. The lower the number, the lower the angle and thus more supports are generated. Higher the number, of course, less supports are generated. And in theory, less supports is good, right? Less material, less cost, less to remove. So why not just raise it? Well, when you start trying to print a, a pretty steep overhang, like say 75 or 80 degrees, you're gonna either get a failure because there's nothing to print on or you'll start getting these kind of rough spots and loops. Now, there's something called the 45 degree rule of modeling, which is, you know, you don't want any of your inclines to be steeper than 45 degrees because that's all that you can handle when it comes to FDM printing. But that's generally not the case. You can kind of bend it depending on what you do. And I think that most minis have relatively organic shapes. So this isn't something that we worry about too much because in my experience, about 60 degrees overhang is generally acceptable and it's generally very doable. At least that's what I was doing. I used to always leave my support angle at 60 because it was safer and it worked. And that was pretty aggressive now that I think about it. And now that I've tried making the threshold higher. Now I did that because I had failures and I thought they were related to the support overhang number. And that was wrong in my experience. You know, the support overhang isn't the main reason why supports fail. And when you do put the number that low, you're left with these over aggressive supports that frankly can be a nightmare to remove depending on your mini. And let's face it, printing minis is different than printing like a square cube or something like that, a functional print, because it's a lot harder to do cleanup a lot of the time. And I know those of you who print your minis understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> this, these red dragon wings is a perfect example. I literally had this dragon for like a year, have not touched it because I just have not wanted to deal with the additional cleanup after the initial big chunks of support removal. And this was my fault as a newbie printer. You can fix that by orienting the print properly to avoid this as much as possible and using less aggressive overhang, right? Anything less than 60 is generally much safer, but again, you're putting support material in parts that don't really need it in my experience, especially for the Ender 3, which even with like stock cooling still prints perfectly fine in my opinion, even past 60 a lot of time. And that is what I'm predominantly printing on these days and I think many people in the community are printing on it. So that's why I mention it. Some people who do want those better overhangs and bridges, they print new fan ducts to improve their cooling. I'm pretty happy with the stock fan. With stock cooling, 70 is my personal limit and 65 is generally my safer bet these days. Uh, I normally print at 70 though. Let's talk about the support pattern. 
I use lines. I used to use zigzag and connect support with zigzag. Somebody a while back turned me on to lines and didn't pay much attention to it. And I've been printing with it recently and I like it more. <laughs> and ever since I started using lines, I guess consider me converted. <laughs> now the, the nice thing about lines is you have this very clear picture of what's being supported on your minis in layer view. I can see this area is gonna be well supported in this case and not so well supported in this one. So you can also crunch the supports with some needle nose pliers exactly the same way I crunch supports in my support mover video, which you can check out up here. Moving on to support density. Support density is how dense your support structures are. Now one clarification, this isn't like how dense they are material wise. This is how many support structures there are in a given area. This is one setting where you know, if you feel supports are too strong or hard to remove, you lower the density. One thing that is affected by support density is the distance between these lines here. For larger prints, this isn't really that big of a difference, but for minis, this can be the difference between a supported piece or a piece that isn't really supported at all. The distance between support structures is automatically calculated by Cura, and if you open up the full settings, you can change it. I wouldn't recommend it though. If you have a part that you are concerned will not be supported with that line directly under it, you can try increasing the support density so that it's supported, or maybe try rotating on the Z axis so that the line lays across horizontally and you can get support that way. I generally leave my support density at either 15 or 20%. I also turn on support brim. What this does is it creates a brim for your supports to make it less likely that they'll fall over, causing a failure. I use these when I'm printing a mini that's on its base and I don't wanna put a raft under it. Next up we have Z distance, and Z distance is how far the top of the support is from the bottom of the print where it's supposed to touch. And the closer it is, the more secure that bond is, but the harder it is to remove. Raising that number increases the gap and making it more likely to fail, but also easier to remove. One other thing, what you see in Cura is often different than reality, at least in my experience. Not sure the science behind it, but <laughs> You know, I see this and think, there's no way this will print. That, that gap is too much, but it does. Uh, so if you start changing this, you know, I encourage you to run some of your own tests to see what works best with your specific filament. I set mine to 0.2 millimeters if I want to be safe and 0.3 millimeters for things like minis usually. Next setting is support interface and I turn mine on. The support interface is this thick skin that sits on top and underneath the supports. The top is called the support interface roof. The bottom is called a support interface floor. It makes final removal just way easier and way cleaner because it usually comes off in one piece, both the floor and the roof. Careful because if you put a support floor, places like this mouth, there just isn't enough room there to remove that support. I might look at the bottom part of this print and say, that's kind of rough. And it is, but if you wanted this to be smooth, you could still do it easily afterwards with some post-processing uh, and with a little bit of time. I would probably use polycrylic like I show in this smoothing video and just be done with it. But in reality, once I prime this, it's only gonna be visible looking from underneath and I'm not entering this mini into a competition or anything like that. It's just gonna be for my table. So I'm okay with having a little bit of a rougher bottom and just moving on. Again, in my experience though, it's still much easier to smooth this textured surface from an interface rather than to take all the time to clean it up individually afterwards without the interface. That's just been my experience. Believe me, you, you don't wanna find yourself facing that much support cleanup on a print like the Flame Dragon. <laughs> now let's talk about printing things with lots of small, spiky, extending parts like dragon heads. Cura struggles with how to support this type of print in my experience, and I've probably had more failed dragon heads than any other kind of support failure because of it. What really helped is turning on towers. Now towers will build up to this solid little point, and when you couple it with support roof, it generally creates this nice little place for the print to sit. Orientation still plays a big part. Like for example, I still printed this head raised above the base that the tower had time to build up and not topple over. But in generally, this really helps with those small thin pieces, especially for things like minis. Going back to this print, you may have noticed what I just mentioned, which is I lifted the head up a little bit. The reason I did this is because the print required it. These tips aren't flat and Kira will want to treat it like it's flat. And sometimes the ports won't generate because it's just such a small difference, right? And you don't get good adhesion and you get failure. So something else that's helped me is rafts. You know, only when I don't have this clear flat part of the print to start with on the base. This head was a good example. Okay, this dragon body is another good example. The extra filament I use printing supports is really only a few cents difference 
and we're talking just a few minutes difference to, to, to support it, honestly. Maybe an hour or two longer if it's a really big print. And it, for me, it's absolutely worth it to know that it'll print as opposed to printing and realizing that the bottom half of my print looks terrible because it was never properly supported in the first place and Kira wanted to just set it the default at the floor. Finally, I talk a lot about orientation. I have a video talking about this, so I won't get too deep into this, but one of the things you do need to look at is the layer view. You absolutely need to look at this. Here's a very good example of why. There's something that's unique to line supports, which is why I talked about it early in the video. Sometimes you look at the layer view and you realize Kira's trying to lay a support roof over thin air. Sometimes this works, but in my experience, it usually doesn't. So if you aren't paying attention to your layer view and looking at the supports before, you can miss this. It's easy to. If I print it, sometimes I try and turn the mini a bit along the Z axis. Now the roof isn't being printed on nothing. There's a clear bridge for it to lay on without having to really tweak settings. It was much easier just to turn the print. Other than that, orientation's really a great place to start. If you start getting failures, if you need the detail standing up or 45 degrees, if you want that strength, generally the mini flat on its back with the roof and then you just clean it up some more, but it's a lot easier with that interface like I had mentioned earlier. And then you do get that extra strength while still having some somewhat of a visual difference. For those of you who like using tree supports, tree supports do a lot of this stuff as well, which is why some of these results can, can feel similar. And you might just say, well, why not just print with tree supports? And you can, uh, like a month ago, I did try tree supports again, but tree supports uh, have led to more failures in my test and in my experience, you know, they have that one piece that's unsupported and it fails. And this is kind of a good balance in the middle for me, which is why I, choose to kind of turn the settings on that kind of mimic it while still having relatively traditional support settings. If you're still wondering why I don't go back and try them, well, part of the problem wasn't with the supports themselves. It was with the way the supports generated. It goes around the mini. And when you have so many small parts on the mini, like a small parts, maybe on a Hero Forge print or something like that, it was just so easy for me to remove it and it not come off in one. And me then have to kind of accidentally remove one of those pieces that was hanging off the side of the mini. And that is frustrating, or remove an arm, or remove a leg by mistake when I was just trying to clean it up. And that was so frustrating for me, because I had no control. And when I'm cleaning up a mini, I, I, I need to have as much control as possible. That was just me though, lots of people love them and totally think they're worth trying. And that is absolutely one of the easier options is turning off your supports, but clicking enable true supports and then just letting it do its thing and giving it a shot and seeing if it works. Some people absolutely love them. So there's that. The other thing that I found is that the filament I used made a huge difference in how difficult the supports were to remove. This cheaper filament, Decale or Decale, or however you pronounce this, it's now become one of my favorites, honestly. But some port removal with it was just so much easier than with say Hatchbox or Dirty Solutech or eSun. I mean, my results weren't terrible per se with either of those. Support removal was still a lot easier than with like traditional cure supports and maybe a little bit more Z distance, things like that, what I was trying in the beginning. But I think the quality of the filament, even in terms of like layer adhesion, might not make much of a difference in the finish, but absolutely made a difference for me in terms of support removal. So just take that into consideration and maybe try out some new filaments if you're struggling with supports. It might just make a big difference if that is something that you're doing. And let's have a bonus setting because I know that there's some people that have asked this before, but if you are printing multiple prints or maybe in your own print, you can't stand kind of the, the, the stringy look between supports because Kira automatically turns off retraction when you're printing supports. There's a way to disable that and have kind of cleaner prints. It'll take a little bit longer, but the setting is called limit support retractions and you want to disable it. It'll probably get rid of most of the stringing, but for me, it hasn't affected any of my support quality, but I've never cared if when I print it, it looks ugly. Um, so I just leave it. It doesn't really add that much more time in my experience anyways, but for those who have wondered about that, there you go. I, uh, I want to thank Andrew Gardner or Gardner. Andrew made a post uh, sharing some settings that worked for him in the Tabletop 3D Printing Guild, which is our Facebook group. And frankly, this video wouldn't have as many options for you to try if it wasn't for that thread and for Andrew putting, his, putting himself out there and sharing what he's learned. So thank you, Andrew. And thanks, Dennis, for sharing what works for you. Now it's your turn to tell me what I forgot, what I missed, what I may have gotten wrong, what works best for you. So leave a comment, let me know. If you wanna support the channel, 
you can visit our shop for some super sweet models like you've seen throughout this video. It helps us keep making these videos for you all and I appreciate the support so much. Happy printing and happy gaming.